Hello, this is Michael Bell from the International Research Institute for Climate Society at Columbia University, and I'll be talking about how to use the rainfall analysis tool in the IRI Climate and Fire Resource Map Room. The rainfall analysis tool allows users to monitor and analyze recent rainfall in Indonesia in the form of maps and location-specific time series. High fire activity tends to be associated with below normal rainfall, particularly in the dry season in central Kalimantan and surrounding provinces in Indonesia. This tool allows stakeholders to view satellite estimates of rainfall and compare them to previous years to help to determine fire risks. Decadal are approximately a 10-day total of rainfall estimates are shown on the map from the chosen time period. The user can then click on the map to show time series of precipitation anomalies comparisons to other recent years, and cumulative anomalies for the chosen location. To go to the Climate and Prior Resource Map Room, click on the URL shown here. When you do, you'll be given a page that gives a short description of the Climate and Fire Resource Map Room. And further down the page, you'll see a link to the Indonesia Rainfall Analysis Tool. Just click on that link or icon below it to go to the tool. When you do, you'll be shown a map of precipitation estimates over Indonesia for the latest available decadal, which in this case is the 1st through the 10th of November of 2010. To view precipitation estimates for a different date, just click on the drop-down menu next to the time label and choose one of the dates listed there. You can also use your mouse to click and drag a rectangular box over a region on the map to zoom in on that region. Above the map, you'll see some options for overlaying different types of boundaries on the map, including coasts, countries, provinces, and districts. At the moment, countries and provinces are displayed on the map. In this case, I'll choose the districts checkbox, and when I did, the redraw or circular arrow button at the left side of the page highlighted, which is prompting me to click the button and apply the change that I've just made. If you decide that you want to zoom back out and view the full extent of the map again, click on the middle button highlighted in red here. At the upper right-hand side of the page, you see a drop-down menu that allows you to choose between the district and province option. You choose one of these options when you click on the map to view the time series of precipitation over either a district or a province. When you make that selection and then click on the map, you'll be shown additional information below the original map. One of the things that you'll see is a map showing the location of the district or the province that you selected along with the name of the district or the province. Then below that, you'll see three time series that you generated when you clicked on the map. One of these shows precipitation anomalies compared to a multiple year average, which is on the left. Another time series showing precipitation over the calendar year and precipitation from the current year compared to other recent years in the middle. And on the right, accumulated precipitation over the past 12 months compared with what would be normally expected during that time of year. If you click on the leftmost time series, which is the time series of precipitation anomalies, you'll get a zoomed in view of the time series, which is shown here, and you'll be given additional controls on the page. For instance, you can use this number to influence the size of the plot. You can also choose to display the font in different ways in terms of different styles or different sizes. You can also choose to download this image in multiple file formats, including PostScript, EPS, PDF, JPEG, GIF, or PNG. You also have the option of making changes in the text boxes below the time series to change the range of times available and shown on the time series. You can change the first date on the left and the last date on the right, and then click the circular arrow or redraw button to the left of the time series to zoom in on a particular period. So that's what we see here the time series from the 1st of January 2007 to the 20th of March 2009. You'll see on the plot that the black line shows the total precipitation. And there's also a gray line that shows the precipitation climatology, in this case the average over 2003 to 2009. Areas in blue show where the total precipitation is above the multiple year average, and areas in red are where the precipitation was below the long-term average. For instance, these periods in 2008 were generally below the long-term average, and these locations were above the average. Next, if you go back to the page that we saw before, you'll see another time series in the middle. This time series is showing you precipitation over the calendar year for the current year, which is in black, 2010 compared to other recent years. In this case, 2009 is in blue, 
2008 is in pink, and 2007 is in green. And what you can see in all the plots is that there's a definite dry season between about June and September in all of the years. You can see which years were maybe a little wetter or a little drier than other years. It appears that in 2010, it has generally been a bit wetter than other recent years. Going back again to the third time series on the right, if you click on that, you'll see a zoomed-in version of the time series. This one shows you precipitation accumulated over the past 12 months, and the location has been selected on the map. So the black line on this page shows precipitation amounts accumulated over the past 12 months. The gray line shows precipitation that would have been accumulated over the past 12 months in the climatology, the average over 2003 to 2009. The area in blue shows the above average accumulated precipitation compared to the long-term average. This can help to give an idea of whether there is an increased or decreased fire risk in the location that you've selected. These are the primary elements of the Climate and Fire Resource Map Room tool.